Hello friends. In this video for the chapter kinematics, we will be going through some basic graphs which are position time, velocity time, acceleration time and we will also cover how to interpret different information from the different graphs which are given to us in different problems. So let us start with what do we mean by XT, VT and AT graphs. So by XT graph we mean that on the y axis x is given and sorry on the vertical axis x is given and the horizontal axis time is given and if you are plotting a curve like something like this that means that I am plotting the different points at which my particle was present with respect to the time uh, associated with that position. So that means that okay at this point on time let's say t1 my position was x1 and similarly at time at this time of t3 my position was uh, my associate position was x3. Similarly I can find out the different positions with respect to different times. And similarly, if I'm instead of plotting x, I'm plotting velocity, then, then I can find out different velocities at different time instants. And similarly for the acceleration as well. So that's what we mean by xt, vt, and at graphs. And now let us see a couple of properties of the graphs through which we'll be able to interpret a lot of information from xt, vt, and at graph. So one basic property of a graph is, let's say, this is my graph for uh, two variables. So let's assume that it is x and this is t and at time t1 it gives me x1 and at time t2 it gives me x2. So you must have covered uh, the concepts of a straight line in your mathematics chapter of straight lines in which uh, you know that uh, uh, how to define the slope of a straight line. A slope is the angle which the line makes with uh, the x-axis and it is, cal it is calculated in a counterclockwise sense and the tan theta is the slope and tan theta as you know from your trigonometric principles is uh, of a triangle is this divided by this. So this is y, this is x, then this is y by x, if this is theta. Similarly, if I am finding out tan theta, then how can I find it out? So this is my y in this case, or this is x2 minus x1, and this is t2 minus t1. So the slope in this case, is x2 minus x1 upon t2 minus t1 and it is equal to this concept like this is equal to tan theta. So uh, do you recall anything by seeing well, like when you are seeing this formula? It is the same formula we used for the velocity, average velocity. So we can drive we can derive a simple thumb rule from for the xt graph is that the slope gives us the velocity and average velocity because in our previous videos we have specifically covered that what is the difference between instantaneous velocity and the average velocity. So we, I can easily say that this is the average velocity. Let's say if instead of xt graph I am considering a vt graph. So instead of x I have v, instead of x1 I have v1 and all the things are same. Then the slope in that case will be v2 minus v1 upon t2 minus t1 and that would be equal to slope in this case. So the slope of uh, vt curve which will give me average acceleration. So these are some important things to remember. Uh, as we go ahead in this video, I will be making out a chart in which uh, we can easily 
tabulate what are the relationship between x t v t graphs and the variables of x v and a and how can we move back and forth from these so all those things so this was the property of slope another property is that if i have a v t graph and if this is the graph uh, yes yeah, so one thing i wanted to tell in slope as well that if i am moving x2 close to x1 so what will happen that if the x2 point is moving closer to x1 then this is going towards this way so this is going so let's say if i have moved x2 at this point then my y thing is become small and similar and corresponding to it my t2 has become closer to t1 and from the concept of instantaneous velocity if i am making t2 very very close to t1 essentially i am trying to find out the velocity at that instant of t1 so that's what we can also say that if we want to find out the slope at t1 so that would be the instantaneous velocity at t1 and that can be calculated by dx by dt at t1 and similarly for the acceleration as well so this information we have got from xt curve from vt curve i can get acceleration which is instantaneous at t1 by looking at a slope only at the point t1 so it is possible that the curve might be going a little in this shape so but the velo the slope which will be present at the instant of t1 that slope will be the instantaneous velocity similarly the slope if i am looking at this only this position it would be slightly different so this slope will give me the instantaneous velocity at that point like we'll cover this th thing in a little more detail or and we'll make a uh, couple of graphs to just explain all what we mean by the instantaneous velocity from a curve so looking at the second property so this property was of slope and second property we are trying to look is of area and in the property of area we are saying that if we have t1 t2 and correspondingly we have v1 and v2 then the area which is the so we, we say it as area under the curve area under the curve so we can find out this area under the curve uh, by the simple principles like the delta t in this case is t2 minus t1 the delta v that is this thing is v2 minus v1 and if i want to find out the area which is covered by this straight line curve so let us assume it as straight line it would be equal to uh, so the area will be equal to delta t into v 1 because delta t into v 1 so this this will give me area of this rectangle plus half into delta v into uh, delta v because uh, half into delta t into delta v so that that will that will give me the area of this rectangle this triangle so the net area by solving it i can find out as delta t upon 2 into v1 plus v2 so that is the area under the curve and let us assume that again we are concerned that t2 is moving very close to t1 so as t2 is very moving very close to t1 t delta t is getting small and the v2 is coming closer to v1 so at when the delta t is close to 0 then at that point v2 is almost close to v1 so we can find out that the area can be delta t into delta 2 and let's assume that v2 is v1 or almost equal So it will give us two into v one. So it's v one into delta t. 
and similarly if we keep on it so th this is this gives us a small area which is around t1 and let us recall that what was the formula which we had for the velocity it was that dx by dt or we can write it as limit delta t tending to 0 delta x by delta t so if we want to find out the delta x that is the change in position or the displacement we can find out that v into delta t with limit tending t equal to 0 so as you can see the formula of v into delta t is what we have got because we are concerned about the velocity at that instant and here is the velocity at that instant and we have a limit that delta t is equal to 0 so that means that the area under the curve for vt curve can give us the the displacement and similarly if instead of the x i have v and instead of this v i have a so i can get the change in velocity by limit of tending delta into a into delta t so the area under the curve for a vt curve gives me the displacement and the area under the curve for an at curve gives me the change in velocity so these are good thumb rules to just remember and uh, so in this one if i am trying to find the area under the whole curve so it will give me the net change in velocity it net change in position from v1 to v2 so it will give me the whole displacement in this time interval of t1 and t2 so let us tabulate what we have learned in these two concepts of slope and area and so if i have an xt curve and vt curve and at curve and the things i have is that slope and area so these are the two two things which i have and so the slope of an xt curve will give me so the slope of an xt curve will give me the velocity the slope of a vt curve we know that will give me acceleration the sl the area under the xt curve we do not know because the area under the xt curve would be something which we do not know that x into delta t so displacement into time does not give me anything substantial uh, so we are not concerned about that similarly the slope of the acceleration t curve we are not concerned with that because uh, it will give us the slope gives us the rate at which the thing is changing because we know that the rate at which the displacement is changing gives us velocity but the rate at which the acceleration is changing we are not currently concerned about that but if uh, just to give some information it is known as jerk so jerk is one quantity which is referred to as a slope of acceleration but we are not dealing with jerk in this uh, discussion of kinematics for the slabers for je so just for information it is known as jerk and wherever if you happen to come across the definition or this uh, term jerk then you would be knowing that it's essentially the slope or the rate at which the acceleration changes with time so the area of the vt curve we know will give us displacement so not position but displacement because it gives us the change in the velocity and the acceleration of at curve with will give us velocity or like change in the velocity because we are concerned about the two different points in time that is the time interval so this is a very good thing to remember and apply so basically the x t curve area we are not concerned with and we will be doing one question in our next video in which we will be applying these principles and we will start with a verbal question and we will start making the graphs or in some of the problems it is also possible that the graph is given of any one of these and you would have to interpret the different information which you can get from those graphs and make new graphs as well. So I hope this video was helpful and it is able to uh, explain the concepts of slope and area in, in the curves 
we'll be going through certain couple of uh, thumb rules uh, which are very essential in problem solving in our next video do check out the other videos as well if you are not cons if you are not familiar with the concepts of instantaneous velocity and average velocity because these concepts we have tried to discuss in details in our previous videos thank you